Okay. Think I might've got things set up. Can anybody hear me now? I can. Well, that's all that really matters. <laughs> Hello, everybody. It is afternoon. If you're on the East coast or a minute after that, if you're central time, welcome to the 2023 state of Alanthea. I am GM Keelick. Yes, that is the correct pronunciation. I am not Quillick. Um, I am a senior game master for the production team. I've been a game master for about five years and for pretty much my entire tenure, I've been involved with premium and four winds. Isle. started off as the storyteller for four winds and over time sort of, uh, moved around to basically be handling most of premium stuff. I will be playing host today. Um, and I will pass along to the two speakers to introduce themselves. Why do you want to go? Sure. Well, I am the product manager. Uh, you can call me Worm. <laughs> uh, I have been uh, staff since 2007. I've been a game master since 2010. Uh, I started working in the product management role in 2014. Uh, you'll see me all over the place. I do still a lot of game master duties, uh, but there's also a lot of product management stuff that I do behind the scenes. And I look forward to going through the state of Atlantia with everybody. Thank you, sir. Estilde, do you want to take a turn? Hello, my name is GM Estilde. I am the assistant product manager for development. Been a GM for 18 years, starting uh, in January. So I've been here quite a while, um, various positions, and just been involved in development since the beginning. Um, continue to enjoy it. So, uh, well, Looking forward to the future. Thank you, sir. And Tandiwa, would you like to finish this up? It's GM Tandiwa, and I have been, I am the APM of events, which includes um, World and Pay. I've been a GM uh, off and on for a number of years. I'm being told you can't hear me. I, I can hear you. Yeah, we yeah, I hear you just fine. I think you started off a little quiet, but it, honestly, it, it corrected itself pretty quickly on my end. Okay. Um, I became a GM in 2003, took a five-year break in the middle, and have been back since 2017. Excellent. Thank you, guys. Um, just as a procedural note before we kind of get going through the agenda, just want to let you guys know that we are not going to be taking voice questions from the players just as a way to kind of keep things streamlined. We're trying to keep this to around an hour, obviously. If we go over, that's perfectly fine. But any direct questions, if you could please put them into the chat in this channel, that would be a big help. The envoys are going to be helping us sort of cull through those. Once we get through our agenda, we will see what, what, what we can answer of the questions that the envoys collect for us. So just procedural note along those lines. Okay, so with that said, I'm going to kick right off. Um, worm. Why rum? Yeah. What? Um, let's start off with, with numbers. I know there's a lot that you can't share, but what can you share about the overall numbers in the state of the game where we stand right now? Sure. So as we stand right now, uh, our numbers are up pretty decently. Uh, since 2019, we're up 8%. Uh, if you look back at 2014, kind of when I was just starting off as uh, a product manager, uh, we're up 25% subscriptions. Now the subscriptions are just our paid subscriptions. They don't count uh, free to play promos, our old trial system. Um, we don't have anybody on trials anymore, but it, it never counted it. Um, our daily active users also don't count uh, if you've only logged in for like the login rewards. So that first five minutes doesn't get counted if you just log in, log out. Uh, our DA user actually up about 50% since 2014. So th we see quite a few more people in game nowadays uh, the game seems a lot more healthier in terms of login participation and it's just overall been going up now we we did have a huge spike in 2020 and early 2021 uh, but we've kind of fallen back down but we're still we're still up since before lockdowns and everything else that was going on in the world I do have some other fun numbers. There's some stuff that was asked for uh, prior to this uh, in the in the chat. Uh, they wanted some some numbers on what were like the most killed creatures, uh, something about uh, most used weapons. So I'm just gonna go over some quick numbers. Uh, 
Longbow is by far the most used weapon currently. Katar comes in second, and then Hand Axe comes in third. Now, it doesn't really count Rune Staffs because it doesn't really get swung in this case, so I don't have that number in front of me. I'm sure I could probably dig it up, but that's probably the actual highest number if, if we're going to go off that. And then for most killed creature in the game, it's pretty easy. It's a bandit. <laughs> I think we all could have picked that one, and you're probably right about the Ren staff, but it was interesting to hear that ours were so high up. As yeah. In my heart, I'm probably assisting with those numbers quite a bit, but that was nice to hear. The numbers on the weapon cells also is only reflecting like the number of attacks, not individual characters unless I'm mistaken. Right. And usually with guitars, there's two of them, so that may be doubling the actual number depending on how that's coded. I see no problem with this. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Okay. Uh, anything else that you've got queued up to share for numbers, or can I move ahead? Yeah, go ahead. Move, move right ahead. Okay. Let's jump straight into Finia. So Finia, just uh, my side of things, Finia was part of uh, an initiative right when I was first brought on. It's been pending for a while. It's gone through a lot of changes. What can you tell us about where it stands and what the status of it is? Okay. So just to kind of give some more background on Finia, it started as a project back in 2018 uh, to work toward a new player experience team. And we wanted to do something bigger than what we currently have, with, which is the Sprite or the Raging Thrak or just any sort of in-game job system, like you could run messages or water. All of that's really in our tutorial system. So Finia was created to kind of do this huge, epic storyline version of a new player experience similar to something that you might see in a game like the elder scrolls where you get dropped in and you're kind of shown how to play the game so finia ended up just kind of growing into this huge huge place uh, that was bigger than what we really intended there's tons of lore there's new races there's new herbs there's all sorts of uh, new locales that you can go to, obviously, because it's in a new continent, but it's just a whole different concept. And the problem with it as it stands is I think it might be too confusing now to drop a new player into Finia versus where you currently play the game, like the landing or a list. Um, um, so we feel like that maybe Finia is going to have to pivot into something else. We want to really make Finia stand out but we don't know if it's worth it for just five to ten levels of your progression in the very beginning of the game that you might not really go back to so we're thinking about creating finia as new content in the future um, and trying to draw, uh, go back to the drawing board on the new player experience and create a tutorial that's in the the land that is familiar to most people uh, where there's currently players um, and we, we're not kind of pushing you out into this area that even our current players don't even know about. So it'd be really difficult to jump in and say, yeah, play this game. Oh, I have no idea where you are and I don't know what you're doing. So uh, it's not that Finia is off the table or anything. It's that we feel like it just kind of grew into something new and we don't want to lose that new and i think we could really use some new content for everybody and it would be a shame to waste it just on kind of instanced tutorial system because finia also is going to be slightly instanced in the fact that when you're in a phase only you're in that phase you might see other people in the phase but the idea was that you're by yourself being directed and not distracted just to learn the game so that that's kind of where finia stands right now Makes perfect sense. I know there's been a ton of work that's gone into it, and there's some really, really cool stuff that's built that's baked into that. But I, what you're saying makes sense. It, it would be if you went through that Finia system, sort of as it has morphed, then you go from there, you graduate, so so to say, from there, and walk into landing our ice mule. It would be a completely different experience. So I, I mean, it's good content. We absolutely want to use it, but uh, I, I, what you're saying is is pretty clear. Okay. 
Uh, moving down the list, um, I don't think anybody's really interested in this, but you've got uh, something about spell disabler review. I, you know, for the one or two people who might be interested, can you offer some kind of update for that? Sure. Yeah. It's so it is an active project. We are going to wrap that up before the end of the year. Uh, it's a all hands on deck thing that Dev is doing right now. I'm sure it still can actually talk more about what's all going in. I, I know that the spell disabler review has already been shared and talked about a ton. Uh, so this is more of a status update that it it's happening. It's it's coming out for the end of the year and uh, it should be ready soon, right? Yeah. Uh, by the end of the year, I should that. <laughs> um, right. It is being worked on. It is, um, Dev's top priority right now. Um, I think it's something that will be extremely beneficial to a huge number of our population where you can have like a single target disabler that only takes two seconds to cast, uh, um, and only costs one to five mana. So that allows more gameplay that is engaging and more tactics versus just always trying to lead off with your most offensive or potent attack. Um, and then with even AE disablers looking at reducing their mana cost anywhere from like down to five to 10 mana. Um, again, so you can better do the license and have more options. Uh, and so we're continuing to iterate on those and we'll probably, um, start releasing some of those and smaller batches. And so it's not like an all at one thing that we've released. Um, that way we can get it out the door faster and, uh, hopefully into players hands. Awesome. Awesome. I, like I said, there's probably one or two people who are interested in that. So thank you for, for those updates. Um, looking at, I, I'm sorry, I'm having a little bit of a technical issue on my part. Name one second here. Okay. Uh, apologies for that. Okay. Moving down the list. Um, again, it, it, very minor interest, but you know, we've had a couple people, uh, profession reviews. What can you tell us about profession reviews, the status, kind of where we're at with things and how that situation looks. So we, we kind of went through this on the chat uh the professional reviews are kind of in a bad state in terms of having active uh, developers on it right now we had some people that were on it that are no longer on staff and we're working on kind of picking up the pieces and getting that back on track uh as is still kind of talked about we are working on the spell disabler review first uh we feel it's a little bit more important to get that done so that the reviews can get out on time as well because some of it kind of depends on each other so that's where it stands uh, once we get this done and another project that we're going to talk about in a little bit done uh, we will get somebody back on these to start working on them so yeah just, which, uh, yeah i was just going to elaborate yeah unfortunately it does lead to some delay and but just due to uh, I think one of the players posted a like little graph about that showed like the amount of effort versus the um, return like I guess on a product um, so like the Soul Disciple review is kind of medium effort but it has high impact because it affects a huge number of our players um, the other project that uh, Worm had alluded to will also fall into that which is why those two are being prioritized and so individual profession reviews are something still very much on our plate, but since they only affect like a small subset of the entire population, they are somewhat lower priority, um, just due to that fact. I would still say we're very likely to get to a lot of them in 2024, but, um, they're just gonna, they're on the, they're on the agenda, but not, um, at the top right now. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for the insight there. Um, I know everybody's excited about those, but I, you know, we're trying to prioritize things that will affect the larger amount of players. And we have to just make some judgment calls as to what comes first. Um, the next thing on the list, uh, we got three sort of things in a row here. These are all related to upcoming hunting grounds. Some of them, there's more information about there than others. I am, uh, we did not uh, discuss this ahead of time, but I'm hoping I can get you guys to give sort of a brief. I can handle Cryptus, but if somebody can handle a brief what Storm Peak and the Hive are meant to be and the status of them, that would be great. So Storm Peak is a hunting area, or is it uh, above Zolagoth, right? 
yep. on the Dragon Spine Mountains. Yeah, and so that is actually going to be wrapping up this year. It should be out soon. Uh, I, it's a high level hunting ground, but it's not a it's not a cap and it's not uh, a post cap hunting ground. Uh, it, it's going to help fit a, a gap kind of in the hunting around the area. Well, actually, Zolgoth doesn't have much hunting, but it, it's going to hit an area that doesn't have a whole lot of hunting currently. So you're kind of funneled into certain areas in the game. Uh, the hive, on the other hand, is a post cap hunting area and it is quite the experience. Uh, we are still working on getting the environment a little bit better there. Uh, I know that right now it's kind of done in, in the fact that it's painted and the creatures are coated, but we want to make it a little bit more interesting. So that's going to have a slight delay to it, but that is also a very active project that Ashand is working on. Uh, but that's not his prim primary project right now. Uh, again, we'll, we'll talk about some projects that are being worked on still. Um, and then Cryptus is the Isle of Four Winds hunting ground, if you want to talk more about that, Keelik. Sure, sure. Uh, Cryptus is going to be, it's a high-level undead hunting ground that's meant for uh, Four Winds. Um, but this is something that, honestly, uh, we've kind of had to keep pushing it back just for reallocation of staff, again, just for higher priorities. Uh, this is not going to be a post-cap hunting ground, um, it, It's and it would be Four Winds only. So uh, some of the staff has just had to be, be moved off to work on other projects. Like we've talked about, we'll be hearing some of, about some of those projects later on in this uh, session. Cryptus is sort of on the back burner right now. It absolutely is coming. It's been fully conceptualized. We have people lined up to work on it, but those people have other things that have broader reach that they need to work on first. To elaborate on that Storm Peak too, it's actually like there's a couple of areas that will be released with it. Um, one of them is completely new creatures, and then there's, um, that's the high end where it's like level 79 to 85. And then there's a, another area uh, that has um, kind of a mixture that's 72 to 73. And then there's also going to be a lower level one that's 37 to 39. And most of those are kind of older creatures that we've just repurposed. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. Uh, moving down the list. The next thing on this list is something called gemstones. Do we want to elaborate on that, please? Yeah. So gemstones are what formerly was known as charms. So the charm system is going to be called gemstones. Um, it is kind of the capstone sort of item for your character development when it comes to mechanical stuff here. Um, is still, do you want to jump in on that one? Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, there's too much to elaborate on other than what we were released about what the plan is, other like items that you will find. Um, and then you basically equip it, but when you equip it, it's not an actual physical item anymore. And then it like we your character through minor and major properties. Um, it could be completely unlocks completely new abilities. It could be a relatively minor thing where like something that's regional to Hinterwilds. And so as you're hunting there, for example, maybe you're immune to the, um, cold wind as an example. Um, and so those are, that is the other project that is kind of the top priority for dev that we're working on as we're going through, we're coming up with a list of abilities now and how those were all interact. Um, and so, yeah, that's high on our list. Excellent. Uh, yes, I, the, the list of the abilities that I've seen, uh, proposed look like a lot of fun. I think this is going to be very well received. I'm looking forward to it myself. Um, okay. Um, uh, Keep on moving down the list. Uh, next thing up is road service. I know people have been talking about road service. Um, actually, I lied. I miss I misspoke. Bard service. Let's talk about bard service. Where are we at with that? So bard service is the luck talesmans, and uh, we have already kind of shown some of that on Discord. Uh, pretty much just a status update here. It's really close to QC. Uh, we should have some extra snippets here soon. Uh, I know I had some sent to me by the developer, uh, but we're going to share those 
shortly after State of Atlantia, just to kind of showcase what what's all going in and where it stands right now. But uh, we're not really much to talk about in terms of anything new there because it's just just being fleshed out and QC'd right now. Sure, but it, it's well underway. So yeah, that's that's good to hear. Um, okay, uh, moving right along, uh, we're get a pretty good clip going here. Um, uh, there's a thing here about the invoker. Would you like to explain what's going on there? Yeah. So, okay. So the invoker was originally a solution to a, a lag problem that we we're having. We were trying to figure out what was happening with the game uh, for a little while. It, we were going through this horrible, horrible situation where we'd lag or we would crash. And we, we learned that it was due to how spell effects were being layered on to a large number of players. And so we created the invoker to see if that would help, and it did. It, it cleared up the whole concern that we were kind of having, at least in terms of spell effects being placed on hundreds of people at, at once. So the, the invoker was never really intended to be a full time permanent fixture in the landing, but we understand that the invoker has come to be a part of daily life in Gemstone. So we are planning to move the invoker to the Isle of Four Winds. I know that that will take it out of the landing and it'll be kind of more on a premium subscription, but it will be available to everybody instead of just in the landing. Uh, we will put it in the other instances. Uh, uh, it will have a silver cost, only 10,000 silver, but just a slight silver cost just to keep the wheels turning here. Um, if there are issues, though, like we start to see that lag creep back up and uh, we might have to take some other measures if it has anything to do with spell effects, um, We'll talk about it if it if it does happen, but for now, this is the goal uh, for the Invoker. We are going to also introduce uh, a new spell up item, kind of like what we already have in the Simicoin store. The blue ones, we're going to create red ones, um, and I will include those in some event boxes or gift boxes. Uh, I have a later project that we're going to talk about here in this announcement as well, which we'll kind of wrap up into that. So that is the invoker announcement though. I appreciate that. I, I we were going to wait until the end to get all kind of off agenda, but just one comment or question that I've seen quite a few people throw out there and I'd like to slip it in here. Is the invoker for uh premium going to be a hundred percent uptime or is it going to be on the same schedule? It's always been, or is that still to be determined? Still to be determined. I, I'm pretty sure we're gonna just use the same schedule, but we can we can look into that. Fair enough. Didn't mean to put you on the spot. Apologize. <laughs> so it's okay. Okay. Uh, moving on. So uh, this I know this was spawned because some players were asking about it, and we had a huge storyline this past year. So what can you tell us about role play metrics and how we're tracking things and what that looked like on that side of the game? Sure. So. We so we have a a number of them for the in in game side. We have a number of them for game masters, and then there's a bunch that I use to kind of talk it over with Simutronics and how things are going. So we have what's called our post event reports. Those are created by our game masters. They kind of give details on the event, who participated, people who might have stood out and did some something more than just you know the regular role play that was going on. Maybe they started a revolution, who knows? Uh, so th that's our way for the game masters to communicate what happened and kind of show me what's all going on. And then going back to like daily active users, we can look to see, did we have a spike on a day that a storyline happened? And, and then we, you know, we, we note it for whatever's going on. So we know what drives players into the game Maybe, you know, maybe it was a storyline, maybe it was uh, an event, maybe it was some sort of invasion. Uh, and so that leads me to the participation. Uh, there's several ways to track participation. 
obviously just in-game participation is part of it. Uh, another part is uh, getting notes from the game masters to let us know, uh, did a lot of people enjoy this particular thing that you're doing? So if they had something where they traveled somewhere, how many players actually traveled there? Is is Was this a good use of player time by traveling the player to this location? Uh, we we kind of go through this over and over. We try to fine tune things. Uh, we get the lasting impressions that happen during storylines and role playing. Are you bringing it out to the wiki and writing a storyline on it, or giving notes about it, or updating your profiles about it? So all of this stuff is something we track, and we see how storylines are doing, or just role play in general uh, are are doing in the game. Now, there's other things, you know, that we go through, like we talk it over with players in Discord to see if they enjoyed it, or does it get talked about like some of the old storylines, like the Griffin Sword Saga, or War of the Nations, like th does it have that lasting impression? And Tandy, well, I don't know if you want to talk any bit about this one. Um, I recently set out a survey for the nations on the Brink storyline that happened this uh, past year, starting in January, um, and concluding for the most part uh, in September, though there are loose ends that will be tied up throughout the next six months. Um, you can find the survey in the forums folder um, under role playing, and we encourage you to um, fill it out. It is anonymous. Uh, though there is a section that you can include your name if you so choose. It's not required. Um, what what we're doing is we're taking a tack on the no reply forum posts that I do so that as questions come up into it that might need answering, I can address or answer those, clear up any confusion or... <laughs> Sorry, I just read... I just read the chat. Um, so you can go ahead and take a moment to um, get those clarifications handled there. On the whole, um, I'm not seeing a lot of responses in the survey just yet, but it is relatively new. I think it only went live late last night. So we'll be using some of that to make adjustments to how we handle things going forward. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, okay, the next thing and the last thing on the official agenda is events. Uh, I'm not sure which of you wants to tackle this, but what uh, what do we want to talk about with regards to events? Well, I'll I'll jump right in. So we, we're going to have a new event schedule. Uh, we are most of it's the same, but we are dropping one of our major pay events. Uh, it's going to be converted to something else. It's not going away permanently, but it's it's not going to be locked into a certain month. So Duskrun is going to be in February. Rumor Woods is going to move to April. Duskrun in August, Evangate in October. Rings of Luminous is going to be changed in a way where we can run it more often, but shorter. Or uh, we might keep it locked into certain event months, but it's part of the events. Uh, but it's going to give us a little bit more downtime when it comes to pay events happening. Cause right now we're, we're running five of them and then we have the, the sale in December, which does kind of count as a, a major event for us, but it obviously there's nothing going on in game with it. So this is, this is big news for us anyway, because it gives us a little bit more time to work on other projects. Uh, even though rings of luminous doesn't get a whole lot of, extra work into it uh, this last year it did well actually the last two years it did but it it still takes a lot of time to run these events uh, they they pretty much have me glued to the screen for the duration of the event um, so the other part is is weddings are just always going to be available at the start of the the new year so you can just get a wedding package or if you need to get a divorce you don't have to wait for dusk ruin or ebon gate to buy that 
Um, now the venues will still be open at the event, but you can, you can just make the purchases whenever. So you don't, you're not stuck. We've had actually quite a few people who who've missed wedding packages because they didn't understand that it was locked to the event. So this, this will just be better overall. And the other part is, uh, event box and gift box. So we're going to be changing that system completely right now to create those things. You have to pretty much put a creation string in over and over. And it's a lot of QC work that has to go into making an event box live. Um, so we're going to be adopting a new system. Uh, we're going to retire event box. We're going to retire gift box. We're going to call it claim most likely, uh, right now it's tentatively called claim. And we are going to have those as options in there, but we're also going to have new options. We're going to have things that maybe you can buy monthly instead of just a vent box. Uh, we're going to have new things that we're going to work on. Uh, one thing that we've been talking about is maybe we have an item that you build up that comes out of the claim box now instead of it being at the event itself so for an example and this is not one that's going in claim but i'm just going to use it as an example the the ring at the necropolis you know maybe that could have been something better for the box starting off as a fluff item and then you bring it to the event and then you can unlock it um, it's just something we're, we're kind of discussing to figure out the best way forward um, the other thing about event box is we're probably going to be limiting it to 25 entries and it's probably going to get restricted to the account that, that claims the box. Uh, right now, uh, in the, in the beginning event box is doing really well. Uh, I've, we saw participation go up, but currently it seems like most of the entries get funneled to just a handful of accounts. Uh, just, I was running some numbers before this and uh, over 7,000 of the entries at last Evan Gate all went to one person. Uh, that's really not the intent of what the event, the event box is supposed to be. We really want more people to use them. And it's, it's getting to do events for silver. Uh, one, one comment we hear quite a bit is, uh, or did the GMs give up on silver and it's just so far from where things are. Uh, I, I want to make sure that the optics of it are, are right because prior to event box and prior to pay events running so often, you know, an Ebon gate in 2012 might've drained 700 million silver during the shops, um, digging and multi-game. They do a lot of lifting there, but they don't have a real big net loss on silver. Like digging would cost a thousand silver, and I think eventually we we uh, we brought to two thousand silver. But really, the net cost for digging is a little under five hundred silver because you you can earn so much back in digging. Um, but shops didn't really make a whole lot of silver prior to things. Uh, even uh, the Corsine Field events, they didn't bring in a ton of silver for shops. I know the services run a bunch. So shops now, if we, we look at event box, they bring in billions of silver per event, uh, where we, we didn't take billions of silver in any event prior to using this. Um, we drain anywhere between 3 billion and, and 8 billion silver per one of these events. But we also want to make sure that everybody's kind of trying to do the events themselves. And that's why we, we want to restrict the event box. So there's, there's other things that are going to go into it as well. Uh, we're going to create a new, well, we have the event verb. We're going to create a way to claim your entries so they don't take any sort of inventory space anymore. I've talked about this in the past and that you can just freely go into events when you've claimed them all. And we're, that's all going to be kind of housed in the event verb. And so those are our 
big of like at least on the pay event side announcements gotcha uh thank you for for diving into that um uh, for what it's worth i agree um i see where you're coming from uh that brings us to the end of our stated agenda we have been the envoys have been doing a great job of collating some of the questions that we've gotten from people um do would you like me to just go ahead and launch into those we want to take five and you and i can converse offline about how we want to approach those how do you want to do that yeah let's take five okay everybody we're going to take a five minute break we're going to converse we're going to get a new line of questions built off of what the envoys have suggested to us and then we'll start back up after that all right and we're back it was five minutes ish greg can get over himself perfectly fine okay well uh the envoys have been collecting questions for you guys uh a lot of the stuff that you guys are asking about we don't have a whole ton of details available but we will do our best to address as many of these as we can i think we're on pace to sort of finish up at around uh, the hour mark we might go over a little bit but just to give everybody an idea of uh, the intent here um i guess Let's start off with uh, the GM hiring process, the new class that's coming in. What can you tell us about where that stands and what's going on on that end? So we had a lot more applications than we generally do. Uh, and each each application could have multiple forms filled out. So like if you want to be a dev GM or a systems GM. So it was quite a bit to go through than what we're, we're used to. So we should be sending out emails to our first wave of interviews uh, they might have already gone out on friday but they'll probably go out mostly this coming week so that's where it kind of stands interviews are underway first wave and we are still on track to having everybody start basic training either very end of this year or right at the beginning of next year uh this is an example. My, I was hired in 2009 before Ebon Gate, and I didn't start until January of 2010. So there, there is a bit of a, a slowdown there, but we we're on track to get people started soon. Excellent news. Thank you for that. Um, okay. Uh, again, like I said, a lot of these, there's not going to be a whole lot that we can share, but we want to address some of this stuff if we can. Uh, what can you tell us about the rogue service? I know there was some conversation about it. I mistakenly alluded to it earlier because I know it's a hot button issue for some people. What can you tell us about where that stands and uh, what the road forward looks like? Um, I think as why are kind of or warm, however you say it, uh, <laughs> I mentioned in the thread, um, like that is a kind of, of something, a project that has been partially coded, but it's not nearly as complete as, um, players would like um so it's not something that is going to be available anytime in the immediate future we're going to because we are working on this whole singular review and gemstones as are the current priority um after the are complete then we'll look at what other projects to tackle next and again going with the ones that are more high impact um that can require the lowest amount of effort so that we can then push more of those out um but we will eventually get to the rogue circle service in 2024 but we don't have any concrete um timeline about when that would happen sounds good thank you for that uh next up uh and if you wouldn't mind talking a little bit because i believe you have the updated information about sadie improvements the ultra system for four wins and for premium what stand how where do we stand with that and what's going on there sure so um i'm sure by now you guys are all familiar with the dusk rune verb uh, the one that lets you track whether or not you um, have an item ready to be worked on for uh, a Hess item or whatever. And uh, GM Haliste has been working on a Sadie verb that will work the exact same way. Um, you'll be able to um, submit your scrolls through that instead. And it'll be a little bit more friendly and easier to track. Um, we're still working out little tidbits about the fodder being turned in for individual items. But one of the things that um, we're tossing around with is having um, an NPC you can mail it to so that anybody working in the Sadie uh, verb will be able to pull from that one central location 
and you will only have to remember to send it to one location. That's where we're at right now. I know that we're getting ready probably in the next month for the testing of that. And um, I'm going to uh, see if we can't push it to test so that it can be tested a little bit more easily. That's excellent news. That's something that people have been asking for for a long time. That's that's great to hear. Um, okay, uh, the next one's up. Uh, Estilled, I think these are probably all going to be coming to you, and I imagine there'll be uh, variations on a theme. But just to run down the list, uh, people have been asking about Ascension status improvements. Where does that whole system stand at the moment? Yeah, so a lot of those are still currently on hold. Well, just for a simple fact, like one of the reasons we started tackling the profession reviews was we needed to update and modernize a lot of the existing um, skill kit of the different professions. And we could start implementing Ascension for some of the professions that we have completed that for, but then I think that would be kind of a bad feeling for the other professions that have not had their profession review completed. And then these other ones are getting Ascension abilities. Um, but it is a tough road to travel because of, um, unfortunately, we have our player base and a lot of players that are resistant to change. And so sometimes pushing these review through has been more work than we had hoped. Um, but we are still going to work towards that goal um, and still implement those reviews and then hopefully move on to Ascension so that we can then offer new abilities and new training paths for the different professions. Awesome. Thank you. And and that sort of, so the other two things I had on my list were other profession services and also speaking about Paladin and Empath, it all kind of falls under that same umbrella uh, and kind of goes back to the theme earlier where I, and we've just had to prioritize certain things and it, those are absolutely uh, you know on the list. They are a priority. It's just things, other things need to be cleared out first. Yeah. And just to elaborate, I would say like we're certainly not going to um, take off on a new um, like new profession abilities when we're still working on the existing ones. Um, not to say that they couldn't happen. So if anyone has ideas, we're definitely still open. And, and like, usually a lot of the work is like in the design anyway. So we can always work on that concurrently, but we're not going to like announce anything today. And then like, unfortunately, because of these other projects didn't get to it. And then it becomes a reoccurring issue. I did want to bring up the Paladin and, um, updates just because those are high on our list too, probably more so than most of the other um, pending updates. And so I would say that when we, do go finish the Skull Disabler review and Gemstones, we're probably going to prioritize the Paladin updates just because they have been lingering. Um, again, for reasons that we really can't get into that were unfortunate, but um, it's where we are, and we do want to make sure Paladins do get those needed updates. Excellent. Thank you for, for clarifying that and offering a little more insight. Uh, it looks like I'm looking at the clock, I'm looking at our, our collected questions. I think we probably have time for one more and I believe this one is probably best suited for you, Tendua. If you could address sort of the guru situation and how you sort of set up the the roadmap going forward for that side of things. Sure, I'm happy to. So in November, when the dust has settled somewhat from Evan Gate running as long as it has, um, I start putting out feelers with the team to come up with their ideas for new storylines, update statuses on the current storylines that are still running, as well as looking at where our guru gurus are for the year. Do they want to stay on as guru? Do they want to move on? And we start looking for um, filling in those gaps around that time. Long about the 1st of December, I have a good idea of what our roadmap looks like, and I start reviewing where we're heading and where we're going in those areas from that point forward. And I'll send out general emails to the entire staff. If you're interested in being a guru for this, please present to me You know what your interest is, where you envision them going, and what experience you have in the area so that we can get a better idea of whether or not they're going to be a good fit. And then we start working from there about figuring out how and where they're going to be moving forward with stuff during the year for that new guruship. Um, a lot of times people are very comfortable where they are. They're very good at what they're doing and they keep on in their guruships um, without any difficulties. Sometimes we have fluctuations, things don't seem to fit and people move away from them. 
So um, I will say that we've already started with um, pulling in questions about what kind of storylines we want to review. Coming to the 1st of December, I'll send out asking questions about gurus. And to be clear, because I see a question in the um, the chat, when I talk about gurus, I'm speaking specifically about race and town gurus. I don't deal with any of the other ones. Excellent. Okay. Um, thank you very much for, for diving into that for us and clarifying things a little bit. I believe that brings us to the end of our session here today. I want to thank everybody for taking some time to join us. Thank you for all of the questions. Always thank you all very much for your continued enthusiasm for the game. That's what really makes it fun for all of us as well. Um, hopefully we were able to share some some good information here. Of course, there's some lumps, but overall, I think we're doing pretty good. Uh, thank you to Wyrum and Tandawa for taking some time to answer some questions. And again, thank you to all the players. I will have the recording of this available as soon as I can get Craig to process it correctly for me. I have to do a little bit of, of processing on my end to put it all into one stream. As soon as I have that, I'll be putting some links out there for people, anybody who wants to have access to the audio to do whatever you wish with it. Okay. Thank you once again, everybody. And we will see you around.